Um, you know, when, uh, when Disney acquired Fox, we got the rights back to hundreds, thousands of our Marvel characters. And Deadpool, uh, and Ryan was the most enthusiastic to do it. Deadpool had been two incredibly successful movies for them. And we started conversations about how to do it, how to bring him into our cinematic universe. And he had great ideas for it. And we were trying to figure out the right time and the right placement. And then Hugh Jackman called Ryan and said, I want to, I want to come back as Wolverine. And that is what solidified our path to the movie uh, everybody's about to see. There were a lot of questions when, when Marvel Studios uh, was going to do a Deadpool movie if we would keep the, that R-rated tone. And the answer from the beginning was absolutely yes, because those two movies had set a tone remarkably well and stood alone, and in part of their unique uh, element was that tone. So we certainly weren't going to undo that. So we wanted to see how we could take that tone with Ryan and elevate it to even bigger, uh, uh, loftier uh, heights. Ryan Reynolds is one of the most uh, full-rounded, uh, well-rounded, intelligent filmmakers I've ever uh, had the privilege of working uh, with. Uh, producerially, his writing, of course, his acting. He cares about all of it. And I think there's a sense that people have that Ryan just, uh, you say action, and he just starts telling jokes. Um, and he does. But before that happens, he spent months or years toiling over the script and toiling over the conceit of the movie in a, in a very, very um, detailed way. Uh, Sean and Ryan had a great history together and made a bunch of movies together, so Ryan uh, 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 asked him to come on board, and we liked that idea. We'd not worked with Sean before, but we're a fan of what he, he had worked on. Uh, but having the chance to get to know him and his enthusiasm and his care of the craft every day on set, and every actor will say this, um, was special. And he was always first on, last out. He has an energy that is matched only by Ryan. The two of them uh, carry the entire production on their shoulders. Um, and Sean had a great uh, ability to take what Ryan had already done in the first two Deadpool movies and what we had done with our 30 plus MCU movies and blend it together into something that's very cohesive and, uh, and emotional. Well, it's Brian and Hugh have been talking for years uh, about working together and about bringing those two characters together. Hugh tells a story that he announced to the world just before he started production on Logan that this would be his last time playing the part. And he said three days later, he saw the first Deadpool movie and went, uh-oh, that'd be fun to do. But you know, they focused on, on Logan, thankfully, because they made an incredible movie there. And I think years had to go by. You had to earn and keep the ending of Logan intact until you bring, uh, uh, until Hugh was comfortable coming back. Uh, and the whole storyline of Deadpool and Wolverine is about maintaining the integrity and the legacy of what happened in Logan, and yet utilizing some of what the MCU has with uh, our multiverse uh, agencies to bring another version of the character back. So I think it was fun for Hugh to play this different incarnation of Wolverine for the first time. Uh, Hugh Jackman's been playing this character for 25 years, and, the, and he's covered a lot of grounds, done a lot of great things from the comics. Uh, but there was one thing he'd never done, which was don the original yellow and blue costume. So it was one of the very first things we said to each other when he decided he wanted to come back was, we have to put you in that yellow suit for the first time. And seeing him on set in that uh, was, uh, was a, a very uh, um, uh, sort of career high for me. I think as people have seen in the trailers and the TV spots, the humor will resonate, the action will resonate, but most importantly, it is the friendship of those two. And it is the, and it is the arc that they go through together on the movie um, that is full of joy and optimism and love uh, that really will be the takeaway. And I think it will be surprise people how emotional it is when they get to the end of the film. I think audiences can expect to laugh which I think they, uh, they uh, uh, know is going to happen in a Deadpool movie. What I don't think uh, they will expect is the level of emotion and how sweet the movie is and how touching the movie is. And that's what I'm most excited for them to uh, experience. 
the the funny thing about when Ryan asked me to direct this movie is that he assumed I would say no. I was so instantly stoked. I don't know how else to put it. Like, I was a Deadpool fan and a Marvel fan long before I met Ryan Reynolds. And so uh, I, I was thrilled, I was flattered, because I know what these movies mean to Ryan. And the fact that he was saying he'd only do it if I did it with him, I know the respect that is embedded in that request. And I was instantly excited to take on this challenge, which I knew would be big, but I also knew would be an opportunity to do something different. Here's the thing. Everyone assumes that we were sitting there crafting this team up between Deadpool and Wolverine, but we didn't have Wolverine. When we started off, and for months, for like five months, we tried to come up with a story for this movie. But it, remember, Wolverine was retired. Hugh Jackman had hung up the claws after Logan. And so we spent months with our fellow writers trying to come up with a story that felt worth making and not just a repeat of Deadpool 1 and 2, um, deserving of the MCU, because it's the first Deadpool movie in the MCU, but also grounded and rooted in character as a Deadpool movie. And we weren't cracking it. We were failing. And we were gonna tell Kevin Feige, you know what, it's not happening, let's punt a year or two, Ryan and I will go do something else, we'll come back to this. And on that day that we were gonna tell Kevin Feige, Hugh Jackman called and instantly the movie had a reason to exist. When you're directing Ryan and Hugh in this movie, when I was directing Ryan and Hugh in this movie, and I, I'll never stop feeling fortunate that I got to be the one to get this pairing, you, you're, you're getting two layers of a gift. One is you're directing Hugh and Ryan who are humble, talented, hardworking pros. So just getting to direct these two movie stars um, who have, you know, peerless work ethic and professionalism, that was a gift. But you're also directing Deadpool and Wolverine. You're crafting scenes with icons. And the thrill of that was never lost on me. Even by month three, month four, I still bounced to work because I got to see legends come to life. Before we had Wolverine in the movie, we knew that Deadpool's chosen family was imperative. Blind Al and Vanessa and Dopinder and Yukio and NTW and even Shatterstar um, and even Buck. Um, we knew that those earthbound, real world characters were a huge part of the DNA of the Deadpool franchise. They are as close as Wade has to family and they mean the most to him. So bringing them back and shooting those scenes where I felt a bit like I was hosting a family reunion because these are all actors who worked together since Deadpool 1, long before Deadpool was a thing. And they've all been on this wild ride together and I just kind of sat back and watched the reunion happen and tried to capture in my movie some of the warmth and connection I was seeing on set. Well, I think that we, you know, people talk about superhero fatigue, and I'm not sure I subscribe to that, but I do think there's CGI fatigue. And I think that's not limited to Marvel. That's in movies in general. We, as an audience, can feel the difference when something is created artificially and in post-production versus something that's baked in and real. And Wolverine is a real-world character. Deadpool is a real-world character. They don't come from outer space. They don't fly or have magic powers. And so the movie needed to be true to that authentic, analog quality of these two anti-heroes. And so that meant we're not going to film on green screen. We're not going to shoot this whole movie on a soundstage like so many contemporary movies and other Marvel movies have done. We're going to go in the world. We're gonna build real sets. We're probably gonna get photographed by paparazzi, but that's okay. Like, it's not ideal, but it's worth it because we're gonna give audiences a movie that feels gritty and real, and that's what we've done. Yeah, I mean, the music in every movie is two dimensions always. There's what we call needle drops, which is songs, and score. For score, we hired Rob Simonson, who did The Atom Project for Ryan and I, and who also did things like Darren Aronofsky films and Age of Adeline and Spectacular Now all over the place, sort of like my filmography. 
I like someone who is nimble, who doesn't just do one thing or something predictable. And Rob wanted to do, I mean, I really tasked him with, there's no Deadpool anthem. I've seen both Deadpool movies many, many times. I couldn't hum the Deadpool theme to you. So it started with Rob writing a Deadpool theme that we've now titled LFG that is contemporary and has a blend of electronic and weird ass sound effects that Rob created and heavy emotional orchestra all combined for a theme and an anthem really that hasn't existed in the Deadpool franchise but now very much does. Another thing that was fun for Rob Simonson and I is this movie is about legacy and there are nods and in fact there are tributes paid to the history of Logan, to the history of the MCU, to the Avengers. So the score at various points integrates melodic themes from those other franchises. So you'll hear the piano Logan theme from James Mangold's movie. You'll hear Alan Silvestri's Avengers theme laced in in certain points. And so pulling in those themes that are legacy themes in a movie that is about legacy, that was very fun. The movie is as relentlessly, subversively fun as we want and expect. But I think that fans can look forward to something a little more unexpected, which is, yeah, you're going to laugh your ass off. Yes, you're going to cheer at the sick action. But this story of Deadpool and Wolverine is ultimately one of connection. It's one of friendship and, and eventually of redemption. And so the movie delivers on the fun and the funny, but I think it also delivers on these characters and on heart. And I think that's another part of what people can expect. My hope is that audiences feel that we've delivered a movie built for their delight. I don't work for myself. If I wanted to work for myself, I'd write poetry or I would paint alone in my room. I work for the audience. I make movies for the audience. And so my hope is that this movie satisfies this hunger we've all had for decades to see these two iconic Marvel antiheroes together on an adventure for the first time ever. And hopefully we've satisfied that, that hunger and hopefully we've done more than deliver. Hopefully we've over delivered because I know the expectations are big, but our expectations of ourselves as a filmmaking team were even bigger. Awesome. Oh my God. I couldn't believe it. I wasn't expecting that phone call and um, yeah, I was kind of speechless and then got the pitch from Sean Levy, who is an incredible salesman and could probably sell me anything. And yeah, it was an immediate yes. I mean, I don't think there's one way to approach playing someone as complex and as interesting as Cassandra Nova. Um, Ryan and Sean had a very clear idea that they wanted her to be charismatic and unpredictable and to really keep the boys on their toes in the film. But um, yeah, as for my cinematic references, they sort of came outside of the MCU. Um, Ryan's big reference was Christoph Waltz from Inglourious Bastards and because he's so charismatic and creepily charming in that. And then... Movement-wise, and again, sort of in a world, exploring that world of nonchalance, um, I found Gene Wilder in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory really interesting. The makeup process was long, um, and the makeup department are saints, because I'm a real fidgeter. But um, yeah, I had a bald cap and long prosthetic fingers and an incredible costume that stayed very faithful to the comics, which felt right and really nice to honor that. And yeah, it was an incredible feeling the first time I put it on. Um, I was really expecting a lot of green screen work and it was incredible because I don't think we had one scene that was against a green screen. The sets were so intricate and so lifelike and um, yeah, it was very immersive, but it was incredible. <laughs> Sean is possibly the nicest, most enthusiastic person on this planet and a fantastic director to work with because he's a real actor's director and he has a very strong, confident vision of what he wants from the film. So you always feel comfortable. He's always on top of everything, knows what he wants, but he has a lot of room for collaboration and play as well. He really invites you in and he makes you feel like you can bring anything to the table. Um, yeah, he's fantastic. He also has the memory of an elephant. He remembers the most incredible things that you've mentioned once 
like three months ago and he'll bring it up and it's it's such a I, it's such a commendable skill I wish I was like that oh my god I mean it was a phenomenal cast to be working with it was a really fun set we it was a lot of laughter a lot of light um but it was very chilled you know everyone it was very intimate for a, for a film of this scale it was a very intimate set and everyone felt close and collaborative and yeah it was lovely <laughs> a real I'm still pinching myself honestly I can't really believe that I'm in this film still even though I'm on the press tour God, there are so many that could fit. Audacious, I think. My reaction when I was invited to join the MCU was one of um, delight and excitement. It was a really good fun. I was in, I was doing, I was just about to start a film in Nashville and my agents rang and said, Ryan and Sean Levy, the director, Ryan Reynolds and Sean Levy would like to Zoom with you to talk about this third installment of Deadpool. And so it was great. And I hadn't seen the Deadpool, so I watched them. And then I was even more excited to take the Zoom. So that's how, that was my, that was how it all began for me. So Mr. Paradox is um, a strange man. He's a, he's a sort of bureaucrat. He works for the TVA, which is the Time Variance Authority, and he's sort of middle management. And he's uh, probably a little bit frustrated with his position in the organization. And the TVA, he's in, he's in charge of timelines and monitoring and pruning timelines in the multiverse. I think working with Ryan was just a hoot. Uh, I really, that was just a great pleasure. Um, it's just the sort of back and forth and a uh, bit of improvisation and a bit of lots of trying not to laugh and... And a lot of it just sort of marveling at how brilliant Ryan is as Deadpool and how sort of infectious and funny and brilliant he is. So that was great. So Sean Levy, the director, he's just got this wonderful gift of, um, which not all directors do, but Sean really has it in spades. He's just got this great gift of giving everybody confidence and um, which is just wonderful. He just creates a very, very happy and energized set. Uh, and you can really feel it when you walk on. He's just, he's great. He's great. The atmosphere on set was lovely. It felt very, I think, I think, you know, Sean, Ryan, all the producers, Ryan as a producer as well, he minds very much that everyone's happy and, and that we're, you know, there's no sort of, Ryan's not precious about anything, he just wants everyone to have a good time and tell the story as well as they possibly can, you know, which is why they're there. So they, it was, yeah, it's great from the crew to the cast and uh, working with, <laughs> they were just great. You know, they, they're they really lovely, funny guys and they sort of dressed as superheroes. So it's quite, it's quite sort of intimidating in a good way. Um, no, they're just lovely, big hearted, funny guys who, who, you know, Hugh has played Wolverine for 20 odd years. So it's sort of in his bones and Ryan's the same. Um, so it was really wonderful to watch them work. I think uh, it's the, this Deadpool and Wolverine is a sort of glorious buddy movie apart from anything else. And it's a story of friendship and it's sort of quite touching and it sort of shouldn't be, but it really works. Um, because it's so funny and so silly and filthy and, you know, there's a lot of gratuitous, <laughs> very funny action, but also it's quite, it's very felt. It's, you know, the relationship between Deadpool and Wolverine sort of works in a really lovely way. Um, so that's, it's a real achievement that I think it's a really hard thing to do and they do it really well. <laughs> 